Assalamu alaikum. My brothers and sisters, many times people get married to those whom they had a relationship with in the past. Unfortunately, sometimes this relationship may not have been halal, but uh, when they made it halal, if they were fortunate to do that, actually, sometimes what happens is they say, uh, this person has changed tremendously and they're no longer as they used to be. They're no longer how they were. I'm sure you've heard this a lot of times where people say, you know, my husband's changed completely. He's not the person he was. And sometimes people say, well, you know, my wife is not who she was. She's actually a very different person and we don't get along. Now, people ask, how do we solve this problem? Number one, many times people show you what they want you to see of them initially. And then when you begin to live with them, you get to know them. And this is why we believe you don't know a person truly unless you've lived with them, you've done business with them, you know, you're married to them, uh, you've had deeper interactions with them. If you haven't done business with them, you don't know them. If you haven't traveled with them, you don't know them. Uh, you know what they want you to know of them, but you don't know them as a person. So it's very, very serious because more and more people are saying, you know, we don't get along anymore. It's been two years or it's been one year or two months or three months. And they say this person's changed completely. Well, you've now seen their true colors. So what I want to suggest is when we do get married, number one is there are many people out there who develop a relationship prior to marriage with the opposite sex in a way that goes deeper than what is permissible and uh, becomes prohibited or haram in some way or another. Uh, thereafter, they approach their parents. Sometimes they're very scared to approach their parents. When they do approach their parents, you usually get people say the parents uh, don't want to have anything to do with it. They don't want to hear. They don't want to listen. Well, that is a difficulty. It's a problem because... Uh, the, co the communication with parents should be such that everything that happens, the children first related to the parents, they get advice from their parents. It's too late sometimes when your children have been interacting with others and you haven't even been there for them. You're either busy on your phone, you're busy with your friends, you're busy in your business, you're busy doing all other things. And no parent was there to guide those children. Then a day comes when that particular guidance that is needed is actually uh, from friends or from someone else. So a relationship was developed. I'm not saying it was right or wrong. We don't want to talk about how it got there, but it's now there. What do we do? Because the parents don't want to listen. Well, if I had a solution, we would have presented it to you. But we don't have a solution because parents have their dreams. They have what they want. They have things they would like to see in their children. And if you don't communicate, you might have a problem. Not all parents are open-minded. But I do believe parents should be more relaxed, more open-minded. They need to understand, uh, talk to the child regarding the depth of the relationship. Many people are sexually active from a very young age, very sadly, very unfortunately. But that's a reality on the ground. It's a reality. We need to talk about reality. People brush it, uh, you know, under the carpet and that's it. They think it doesn't exist. It exists. I've known of many children who've terminated unwanted pregnancies. I know of many children who ask about it and we don't know sometimes exactly how to guide them because of the circumstances they present. Uh, it becomes very, very difficult to give people that advice. So when you have uh, a child who's telling you, I want to marry this person and they happen to be a person you didn't really think the child would be interested in, first find out how deeply related or how deeply connected they are, how serious they are. Some people hold themselves back from a haram relationship, hoping that it will become halal. So then they approach their parents and the parents say, no way. But they, they desperately want it to be halal and the parents are not facilitating that halal. My beloved parents, I'd rather you made what you believe is the child's mistake, meaning you allowed the child to make that mistake than, than to destroy your relationship with Allah by indirectly encouraging that which is prohibited because of the environment, because of the pressure, because you're hardly ever there. You're too busy doing everything else. And, and the child's uh, connection with Allah is not developed to the degree that it will stay away from that which is displeasing to Allah. The children sometimes, uh, their connection is not that grand with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we need to develop that so that we can avoid all of these problems by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that the problem is there, uh, to be able to deal with it and tackle it, we must be realistic. So you open, you open your doors 
Uh, you listen to what the child has said. You meet the person. That's the least you could do. The least you could do is to meet this person. No matter who they are, you're the parents. This child has come to you respectfully to say, look, I'd like to tell you what I'm interested in. Sometimes they have a relationship for many, many years. And then the relationship becomes uh, haram and it continues in a haram way because you've just blocked it and sometimes they end up marrying someone else because they don't want to displease their parents and a few years later they tell that person we never ever wanted to marry you we were in love with another party altogether it's happening it's very dangerous so and sometimes when they have a problem in marriage, they end up confiding in the person whom they were in love with prior to the marriage. I'm not saying it was right or wrong. I'm just talking about what is happening. What is happening? So we have to be realistic. Let your child make a mistake, even if they end up coming back divorced. It's better that you did not displease Allah. You, did not, uh, you didn't lose Allah in the process. You did not lose your child in the process. You lost nobody in the process. But what you did lose is a little bit of an inconvenience due to the, the divorce. And we normally tell people, you know, you don't have to plan to have children for two years at least until you really know each other. There's nothing wrong from an Islamic perspective to hold on having children when there is uncertainty in that marriage or when you don't know for a fact that this person is the one who's, who's definitely going to be a very brilliant father of my children because of the factors we face today on earth. People don't like to talk about this, but we need to say it. So to hold back and not to have children for two to three years is not a bad idea at all. Because you're going to bring in children when you don't know uh, the, the, the relationship and how it's going to be and you end up divorced with the child. There's nothing wrong in that happening. But what would happen is the neglect of the child may then make that child one who doesn't actually uh, have that upbringing that it needs from us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make it easy for all of us. So I was saying later on you get married and if you're lucky and your father has heard it or your mother or your parents and your family have supported you they've been kind enough then you end up getting married and wow this person's you know started swearing i promise you swearing come on you need to respect each other please mature no bad words from your mouths i promise you as a muslim you work on your your tongue as a human being you work on your tongue you make sure that you you know how to use it you make sure that you don't use bad words you don't say that which is abusive and hurtful to anyone let alone your spouse and charity begins at home your children will watch you swearing and screaming and yelling and shouting and and even becoming physical which is unacceptable so my brothers and sisters you need to know if we don't mature and develop ourselves we're in for a high jump as they say we're we're in for a shock because the person you've married when they disagree with you sometimes, when they might uh, tell you something that uh, was a correction regarding what you've done, don't feel bad and don't say, right, that's it, I've fallen out of love with you. It's not like that. You're in a sacred relationship. And this is why people say, make sure you marry the right person. It doesn't mean that you just, oh, I like this guy. He's in college and you know, whatever. And that's it. And your eyes are closed. And it's such a bad crush that you don't even know the qualities you're supposed to be looking at in order to get married. And that is, you know, you look at their relationship with Allah, their relationship with other people, meaning the character and conduct. Uh, you look at sometimes... The way, they, the way they are, their habits, all of that falls in character and conduct. So those are the two things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Sometime later you find, oh, this person's not who I thought it was. Do you know why? Because shaitan is now doing the opposite of what he was doing prior to the marriage. So before marriage, shaitan wants you to commit the sin. So he keeps beautifying what is not beautiful to one another. You commit the sin again and again. And then when you get married, shaitan now wants you to commit a sin with someone else. Or he wants to break that relationship because it's halal. Immediately he starts doing something else. And what is that something else? He starts showing you the bad of each other. He starts making you fight he starts making you dispute He's, and the best person is the one who knows how to respond at a time of crisis so when you have a crisis when you have a problem in the home you need to know how to deal with it look at each other with the eyes of affection not the eyes of lust but the eyes of love and yes you will be connected to your spouse in the deepest possible way you know that doesn't mean that 
you will be displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that connection. It's a halal connection. You need to make an effort to actually earn the reward of Allah that is over and above uh, what you're used to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. You see, when you have a, a relationship and you're married, without an effort, you're not going to get anywhere. You need to make an effort, a very, very great effort to understand who this person you're married to is a human being a loving person also a child of loving family and you know friends they have they have relatives they have a situation they have be sensitive to what they are sensitive to try and be understanding try and be a little bit broad-minded yes if there are things that mutually hurt you or they you don't want them you can communicate in a beautiful way but to be honest we don't need to become hurtful many people the, the problem is either the bad habits, they go out every day with their friends and they don't have any any idea or they don't even want to think about the fact that they're married and they believe now that I'm married, it's okay. My spouse may just sit and wait for me. That's not it. That's not how it should be. Why do you keep on with your friends after that marriage the way you were prior to the marriage? That's not correct. Some people waste a lot of time in front of the TV. Some people, most people waste a lot of time with their phones. So you're at home. Yes, you are at home, but you're sitting on your phone. Why? You can put that phone away. Look at your spouse, smile, you know, make it a, a romantic evening. Uh, the tea, the coffee, learn to help a little bit here and there. I'm talking of both ways. We're not talking of any one particular spouse. We're talking of both ways. Some people want to go out with their friends every day. Some people don't. Some people are never there, but when their spouses want to do something, they are quick to object, to say, no, you're not allowed to do this. You can't go here. You can't go there. You can't do this. You can't do that. Come on. It should be a give and take. You need to have a loving relationship. It shouldn't be a push and shove relationship, but rather a give and take relationship. So this is why I say when things have gone wrong, learn to resolve them. Uh, learn to prove that you are definitely better than the person they thought you were prior to marriage. That's a true moment. When you marry someone and you end up finding out more good qualities of them. You end up finding out how great they are, you know, how they suppress their anger sometimes, how they, 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 they don't even show it to you, how they are so considerate of your opinions. And it happens two ways, not one way. How they are trying to please Allah, you know, secrets that they have uh, that are so beautiful in terms of how they help people and what they do. Uh, all this is found out later. Wow, this person's actually better than I thought they were. And as time passes, we need to progress. We need to become better people. We need to actually, uh, uh, you know, improve ourselves. And that's with an effort. It's not just going to come like that. I see many young people are not interested in improving themselves. I mean, if you're smoking cigarettes, you're supposed to try and give up because cigarettes is a bad habit. The whole world acknowledges that. And don't just replace it with something else and say, no, I'm allowed to do a shisha. I'm allowed to do this and that. You know, my brothers and sisters, that's a, that's a little example. But people are on weed and they don't mind. And they are saying, you know what? There's nothing wrong with weed. I think my next session will be on weed. Uh, my next live session, inshallah, will be on weed perhaps tomorrow, if, if possible, uh, because it's a problem. People are just saying, no, it's allowed, it's okay, therefore I can do it. The world can say everything is allowed. Alcohol is allowed in a lot of countries as well, most countries, nearly all countries. So it's up to you to abstain from what is bad for you, from what you believe is wrong for you. It's up to you to abstain from it. I mean, so many sins are legal everywhere in the world. It doesn't make it something that's permissible. Uh, you see, so it's a, there is an effort required to improve the way you talk, your expression. Look at your spouse, smile, put your phone away. There is an effort required to put it away. Ignore messages, ignore them, ignore them, put it away, switch it off. You can actually have a little status up there saying, if I'm not responding, it's because I'm busy or because, uh, you know, whatever the other reason is, any, any reason, you can say it's my family time. And that's it. Put up your status. Family time. I will only respond tomorrow morning. Can you not switch off your phone 9, 9 p.m.? Please? 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 Inshallah, you can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you goodness and open our doors and uh, grant us happiness. I, uh, I don't like it when, when uh, situations are such that people say they're not who they were. I mean, why? Why do you change? Why do they change? Why do people change? Well, we need to go back and develop our relationship with Allah. Like I said, some people have fought to get married to others. Sometimes they've won the battle. And after they marry, they find, whoa, 
Imagine I struggled so much to come into this. Is this what I fought for? And then they don't know how to face their parents because their parents were against it anyway. And then they're vindicated. So this is what it is. Uh, we need to make sure that we try our best, inshallah, to develop the relationships and to solve the problems and to, like I said, your character as well as your connection with Allah. Very, very important. I believe those who, who don't have a relationship with their maker, very difficult for them to have a beautiful relationship with others because uh, the two come hand in hand. In fact, one comes before the other. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us more conscious of it. Barakallah feekum, inshallah, tomorrow, talk about weed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.